Today, we're talking third down. UW Huskies, Chris Peterson, Jonathan Smith, two great offensive coordinators. What are they going to do with the ball? Coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and quarterbacks coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. For those of you that noticed that I've been missing lately, uh, thank you very much for dropping me a note. Had a little body work due to football. I'll have a little video about that coming up here shortly. But uh, several replacement discs in the neck, feeling great, and now it's time to get back to work talking football. Today, we're looking at the dogs. University of Washington, Chris Peterson as the head coach, Jonathan Smith, now the head coach at Oregon State, was his offensive coordinator. He had a young quarterback by the name of Jake Browning, who went on to be an all-time great at Washington. And they're trying to figure out third down situations. We're going to take a look at three different plays, three different stretches, plays that I like so that you as a coordinator, a coach, a quarterback can get into their mindset. And we're going to look at one bonus play, first down play, as a result of one of these third down successes. And we'll take a look at that, and I'll tell you what I mean by that as well. If you're new to the channel, if you love football content, make sure that you subscribe. Ring that bell. That way you get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. Give me a thumbs up. Smash that like button down below. And please leave me a comment. If you have a good question, good comment, love to talk about it here on video for you. Right now, let's take a look at the film. Let's talk about third down. Let's get after it. So it's the first third down of the game. You can see UW is going three by one to the field out here. What they're going to try to do, it's third and 12 here, is they're going to run pivots on the outside, trying to get those first down sticks. They're going to run a clear through the middle of the field, take the high coverage off, and run the over directly over the ball. Back, and I love this, Peterson, Jonathan Smith, whoever it was doing this, they chipped and helped out a lot with their backs. If you're a high school coach, and you're not using your backs to help in protection, especially when the other team's got dudes, then you need to start doing it. This is a great example of it. Using your back to chip in protection. Get those defensive ends back on your tackles. Give them some help and still get your back out in the route. Chris Peterson does a great job with it. Let's get back to the film. Simple read for a quarterback here. What am I seeing if I'm Jake Browning? Well, I can see pre-snap. This, is gonna, this looks like it's going to be cover three. So you're going to have deep thirds, middle field closed, so as I get this run through, he's going to take that safety out over the top. Now, into the boundary, I know that I have a pivot, but I have one, two defensive players playing that boundary. So corner high, he shouldn't be able to take that away. But if this outside backer flies, then that pivot is gone. To the field, I know I'm going to work my eyes down the center of the field as he clears through. I'm going to look for this crosser if I'm running pure progression. But I know as I look to those down the middle, this corner is going to get depth with my eyes, which means it's going to leave my pivot route in the end for me to hit. So watch Jake Browning here. You'll see he does exactly what I was just talking about. He's looking down the middle, not there. The over gets there late, so he finds his pivot. Doesn't get the first down, but gets the completion. And once again, one more look. You can see... As the center field clears, the flat defender, Cal playing nickel here, reroutes number two to the top of the field, takes him off his rhythm. And so because of that, he's a little bit late coming out. Browning does a great job recognizing that. With your flat defender inside rerouting, he can't get out here underneath the flat. This corner has to play high for any vertical threat. And so as a result, it's going to leave this pivot open. Now, Jake Browning doesn't have the biggest arm, but he does a nice job going through his progression here, putting the ball to the outside where his receiver can catch it. Down the middle, not there, don't like the dig, and hit the pivot. You'll see on this, Browning using his eyes down the middle of the field. Right there, he checks the backside, pivot's not there, he knows he's got two on one, now he's looking for number three to clear the middle of the field, and he's waiting for number two to come in. But when number two gets rerouted, watch Jake do a nice job of keeping a wide base and moving his feet with his eyes to the outside. He probably could have gotten outside a little bit quicker. He hung on that middle, but again, this is a young Jake Browning 
working this progression. Inside, two hitches inside, finally outside with the ball to Dante Pettis, who came downhill to keep himself open. So that was third and 12. That's tough on any play caller to find a play that'll work in that situation. They punt the ball away. They got a positive on the play. No turnovers, no negatives. But they come back, and on their next drive, it's third and five. Now let's take a look at what they call. So now the ball's in the middle of the field, like we talked about, third and five. And you can see Cal's giving kind of a two-shell, but if you ask me, safety off the hash, corner a little bit deeper to the field. This is a cover six look. If you remember back to cover six, and if you don't remember the cover six look, I'll put the card up at the top of the screen. But cover six is corner rolling, playing flat, a half safety to the weak side, the opposite safety playing a quarter, and he's going to cut anything that may come across the field. He's going to take that, and the far corner is playing quarter to the field as well. And so it's a half on one side, quarters on the other. The difference between six and eight, as some teams call it, six you roll to the weak side, whereas eight you would roll to a tight end side or a Y side. As you can see, Washington, 11 personnel, so one tight end, one back in the game. And what they're going to run here is a version of mesh with a basic on the inside. So you're going to get tight end releasing and running that basic cross or dig route. You're going to get mesh by receivers here, and they're looking for five yards. So these guys will actually end up, let me draw that better for you, a little deeper at that five-yard mark where they can pick up the first down by falling forward. Over by the tight end goes first. And then on the back side, you're going to get a deep bench route. And what that allows you is a progression as a quarterback. I can work the triangle inside, and if I don't love it, or if I got soloed up single coverage, I can come back out and work this for my final progression. The back, in this case, is going to run the rail. So as soon as your mesh leaves, he's going to run the rail on the outside. If you were to get a chase corner, you're also going to get a pick with that back in man coverage, and you would have a back one-on-one -on -one versus a linebacker with help on the pick. In this case, they're getting zone, and so that alert is off. Browning is working his eyes inside. Now, Pass protection did not hold up for him on this play. Let's run it through one time. You see mesh, basic, with the dig or the corner route, excuse me, the bench or the corner route on the outside. But pass pro didn't hold up. Tackle, tackle to the top, oversets. Defensive end comes underneath and flushes Browning right now. He does a great job of getting the first down by using his feet. But had he been able to set, you're going to see that both of these mesh players are open for the first down. Once again, mesh inside, basic, and right here, both of these guys are open. Now, Browning got flushed. If he was able to stick his foot in the ground, he's got a first down right here with either one or two. Again, over the top, you see if you get man coverage, you get that corner route. They called it a bench, but the corner route comes open, and the rail is covered because linebacker and corner stayed home. So great play call. They get the mesh. It would be a first down, but individual play didn't make it happen by the offensive tackle. Now, Browning, seeing green grass, finds a way to move the chains for his team. Excellent job. Now, here's the bonus play. As a result of Jake Browning getting that first down with his feet, he gave himself another set of downs. Well, Chris Peterson and Jonathan Smith both love to run the football. As a defense, you have to honor the run. So what do they come back with? First and 10 on their own 40, they come back with hound, hound two with a dagger concept. Draw it up. Scores three to zero. 
early in the game, only four and a half minutes off the clock. And I love this play call because you know that Chris Peterson loves to run the football. You have a run-heavy personnel group in the game. So 21 personnel, two backs, tight end in the game. They love to run that inside zone out of that set. So what are they going to come with? They're going to come with hound two, old West Coast verbiage. Essentially, fullback has the Sam, halfback or tailback has the Mike, but since football coaches, especially in the West Coast, love that alliteration, halfback, hound, means he gets the Mike linebacker. So these guys are taken care of. You're going to block these four with these five, take the tight end out of it, these five, and Browning gets to get back and look deep. Now, here's where this isn't fair. You have John Ross, speedster, run ran a 4-2-2 at NFL Combines in that middle receiver position. He is sold up against a safety. Dante Pettis, also an NFL wide receiver, playing that outside spot, going to run the deep over. There's your dagger concept. Those two guys together working on these two guys, full play action inside, keeping the linebackers inside, and now as a quarterback, you've just got to take your pick To the field. Sold up man. Wide field. Play action. This play is a thing of beauty. One time live. Hound two play fake. And John Ross running by a safety. That dude is flat out speed. I wouldn't want him sold up with my safety. One time from the end zone. Good play fake. Head down. Find that safety. I know I've got him beat. Let it rip. Now, what I would would have loved to see would have helped this throw a little bit. It's a touchdown, so not being too hypercritical. But I would love to see Jake put his foot at the target more. He steps a little bit outside and throws away from the way he's stepping his foot. A little bit of that is normal, like throwing a punch. But had he stepped, gotten that foot around to step more at his receiver, could have been able to put a little more on this ball. So he steps left, you can see here, steps this way, driving the ball or driving his momentum that way, and the ball's coming off that way down the field. So just a little thing, quarterback, this is a touchdown. Jake Browning's a fantastic quarterback, but just that little bit would have given him a little more oomph on the ball and probably would have hit Ross in stride. It tends to tail off if you don't step at where you're throwing. So the ball will tend to tail off if you don't step in the direction that you're throwing. Again, you want to harness energy as a quarterback. If you're looking for passing mechanics, we happen to have a course on passing mechanics. It's called Quarterback Secrets Pure Passing Mechanics Playbook. And so, speaking of alliteration, there it is. But if you're a coach or you're a quarterback and you're trying to develop pure passing mechanics, this will do it for you. I will put the link down below in the comment section and you can check it out for yourself has everything you need to know about throwing the football. Let's take a look at the last third down. Now it's third and 10. We're going to end up in bunch formation. This again, Dante Pettis, he actually started out here, and they're going to motion him across to get him to a bunch formation. Snag, if you don't know what snag is, I'll draw it up for you here real quick, is huge in college football. So teams run snag. They run corner route here, outside guy. Pettis would be that guy runs the snag route, and then they run the shoot from the inside or the quick flat. The read on the snag is, if this is open, hit this right now. If you get pure man, you can take a peek at your corner downfield to this underneath. If you get pure zone, now you're expecting this corner to hold the high player off, and you're going to play two-on-one with the flat defender. So if he flies, you sit down, you hit this inside. If he stays inside, you hit the flat right now. So that's snag one-on-one. Teams run it everywhere. Third and 10, they need to get more than five yards on this. So Washington has a play off of snag, and I love this play, where you're going to get that same corner route on the inside, only instead of your outside receiver running the snag, your inside receiver is going to run the inside snag, sit down, spacing route, whatever you want to call it, and he's going to hold that linebacker. Then you're going to get 
a dig by Pettis, by your outside receiver here. Now, what that does is as the corner comes over the top, it holds your high zone player. As the snag or sit down route inside comes inside, it holds that linebacker, meaning that it clears this space inside. It is a great play design off of snag. You could pair it with snag, stick, and whatever they call this play. It's like snag over. But you could put all three of those together and have a nice arsenal of plays out of your bunch package that you can call off of each other to create for different situations. We'll watch it here one time. And you'll see player comes open. Once again, this time Browning has time in the pocket. But look at all this space. He feels pressure. Again, remember he had pressure early. Look at all this space here. If he could have just held on for one beat or anticipated this break a little bit, this reroute helps a bunch. But as Pettis comes around, he's still there. Browning still has a nice dish in the pocket. He's on his third hitch, his third reset. So I understand why he comes off. But you can see one, two. If he could feel it right there, he still has plenty of time to put his back foot in the ground and throw this over. If he hits it, now you have a fleet athlete in space. You definitely get the first down and maybe a whole bunch more. He's trying to come backside now. You can see covered here, backer sits on it. Covered here, corner falls underneath it. This route, wide open, so they did a great job of clearing for it. His back, who chipped here, ended up getting blown back into the end zone. That's not where he wants to be. He should have been chip flare control out here. And then this is John Ross. You can see he's running like a bang eight or something in case they got cover three or off man where he had leverage to throw the bang eight. But he reacts and starts coming back downhill for his quarterback. Browning tries to find him, but can't make it happen. Outside, nope, not there. Throw it away. Smart play. Third and ten, but you know what? You don't have to make every single play as a quarterback. Sometimes it's best to not give it away, to not try to make a huge play and end up with a negative. So one time, full, through, uh, full speed. Let's take a look. Not there, escapes, throws it away. But the dig is there if he can take an extra beat or if it doesn't get rerouted, then he's right on time. Jake Browning was a really heady player. I loved his game. He didn't have the greatest physical tools, but he had enough. And with his mental processing speed, he was a fantastic Pac-12 quarterback. So you can see, even with Chris Peterson and Jonathan Smith calling plays, third down is tough. And so as a coach, as a quarterback, have some go-tos in your arsenal that you feel comfortable with. Now, it all depends on personnel. Can you protect? Can you not protect? You need to get on the sprint. You need to get on the rollout. What do you have to do to be successful? And so rather than feeling the stress of third down and kind of searching for plays, have a package that you can go to, have a package you feel comfortable with, and you will be good as a play caller or as a quarterback. If you like what I did here today, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. Get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that like button down below. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you, your thoughts about this video, about any of our other videos. And again, make sure if you haven't done it, if you're a quarterback or a coach trying to learn or teach passing mechanics, check out that link down below. It is a wealth of knowledge for you in terms of pure passing mechanics, what it should look like, feel like. Plus, it has how to strengthen your arm, how to warm up properly, a bunch of really good stuff in there, pure passing mechanics, quarterback secrets. I appreciate you watching here today. Make sure you share this video out. Help other players, other coaches. Uh, try to improve the knowledge of the game kind of at this younger level, the high school level, where guys can really improve their game a lot. Appreciate you watching. Uh, just a little quarterback training, a little college football film review, talking about some great offensive minds here today, and I'll talk to you again soon.